And, and Doug Camilli was the same way. I mean, uh, uh, I have information, you know, we would go out to eat. And uh, I mean, this one time he left me tickets for the ball game. And uh, uh, after the ball game, I would always go down to the clubhouse area. I'd wait till he'd come out. And we'd go out, I'd go to my car, and we'd go out to eat somewhere, and then shoot the breeze and drink. Uh, beer, we usually drank beer at the time, you know. And uh, uh, he's not coming out. I said, well, what the hell's going on? I must have missed him. Finally, he comes out, and uh, almost everybody's gone out of the clubhouse, all the ballplayers. He says, well, come on in the clubhouse. So I go into the clubhouse, he says, it was Sandy Koufax, is hit Ira here, sitting, because Sandy won't go out until all the guys are gone, and all the people are gone because he says he gets surrounded by these people and he can't get away from them. And he says it's a pain in the neck. He said he says so he said he waits until everybody leaves, then he leaves and he can sneak out. So uh, it was Doug, myself, and Sandy leave in my car. We get in my car and wow, and I got this all written down, but I want to talk to you about it. It's more fun talking about it. He, they're talking about. Sandy's Troubles. So this was like June in um, 53, 50, 54. I got it written down. It's like 54 or something. And this was Sandy. Sandy had a fabulous year before. He was having trouble with his elbow or something in here in spring training. And then beginning of the season, he was terrible. He was His control was terrible. He was having all kinds of difficulty with his with his motion and all this stuff. Well, I'm sitting in a car driving to the hotel, and here's a catcher and a pitcher talking about what? Pitching. And they were, he, was in, he was in the bullpen that day working out because he was going to pitch the next day. You always do that a day before. And he was having trouble with his control. And Doug was in the bullpen with him, and he was trying to get him in the right move, right way of throwing the ball, making sure his curveball would open up and drop and all this stuff. And they're talking in the car with me while I'm driving. So it was like maybe a 30-minute drive to the hotel. And I, I see out front of the hotel, there's a, uh, a limousine sitting out front of the hotel. And uh, they're getting out. And he says, oh, Milton must be here. He was at the, he was at the game, so he's probably at the hotel. We're going to get together for some drinks. I said, fine. I said, I'll go park, and I'll meet you guys in the lobby. So I parked the car, and I walked up into the lobby of the hotel, and there's Milton Burrell, and Sandy Koufax, and Doug Camilli, and me, standing around talking. <laughs> and they introduced me to Sandy, I mean, to, to uh, uh, Milton what's his name? Uh, Milton I'm, Burrell? I'm losing a little bit here. Okay. So, Nothing. Yeah. Uh, Anyhow, uh, you, had, uh, you had the four of us stand around and talk. Then we went into the bar and we started having uh, drinks. Well, by that time, we had uh, uh, Pete, uh, Pete Reese, you had uh, uh, everybody that was a Dodger was in the, in the bar with us because Milton Berle was there. And, all, and the year before, Milton Berle, in the wintertime, Milton Berle put on a big performance and uh, and uh, a big hotel in um, again I'm in the blank spot um, where all the gambling is Atlantic Plus, City Vegas 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 oh Vegas in, like, in Vegas and he had a big stage production mm -hmm. at one of the casinos and he had like five or six Dodgers on a stage with him performing so it was like a performance type thing well, evidently. Uh, I could say it now, I'm not going to say it to, but you had, uh, uh, who was it I said it was, I'm missing it now. P. Reeser, Doug, uh, uh, Sandy Koufax, Milton Burrow. Milton Burrow, yeah. Milton Burrow and Sandy were Jewish. I didn't mention that in, in any of my correspondence. But they were bitter enemies when they were performing because Milton Burrow was a perfectionist. Everything had to be perfect. And every word that was out of his mouth was fuck this and fuck that. You oh know? My gosh. And all he did was cuss and argue and bitch during the workouts because nobody would do what he wanted exactly. It had to be perfect during the, during the, before they had the performances. 
So when they were on the stage, everything was perfect. So that's how difficult he was to work with. Well, evidently, because they were Jewish, they became friendly. And, and there wasn't too many Jewish people in baseball. So uh, he was in some type of uh, performance in the round. I don't know if you do, do those things were around. At that time, that was a summer thing. You would go and they would perform in this a stage that was in a sort of a center thing, and you had seating all around it, and there was a tent. And it was, and it was big in the 50s. And, and Milton Berle was doing something in New York. Well, he had somebody in Philadelphia that owned a restaurant, I can't remember right now, that drove up with his limousine, picked him up, and drove him to the ballpark at, in Philadelphia. And uh, that's whose car was sitting outside the limousine. Well, when we were sitting there, all they talked about was all the chicks and all the parties and all the stuff in Hollywood. I mean, how about this one? How about that one? Did you date this one? Did you date... I mean, that's all I heard about while I was there. And I'm sort of sitting listening to all this stuff. I mean, it was amazing to hear all this stuff going on. And I'm a foreigner sitting in that place. And, uh, and it was interesting to see, you know, the camaraderie of, of everybody and, and the difference in the sports between being in, in sort of a highlight of, uh, uh, of uh, movies and all this stuff. But baseball, I was playing, nobody was looking at any baseball player for any of that stuff. That was, no one even cared about a baseball player in those days, unless you were named Ted Williams or, or you know, Joe DiMaggio or or you came from New York, or you came from uh, Boston or something, or Chicago. And uh, so, I mean, it was totally different when you looked at the ball players at the time. We're, we're um, because you said everything was just nothing lower than D.C., Washington, D.C., nothing past St. Louis. Were there players in the minors from outside those areas? Oh, yeah. We had people okay. in California. Yeah. They played minor league balls in California. You had minor league. Uh, oh, you had teams out. Here. You had you had a lot of minor league uh, leagues here yeah. in California, okay, in southern and northern California, that and, and people would have winter leagues out here at the time. That they were prof a lot of them were professional minor league players. Even major league players would play winter ball in California. Oh wow! So you had a lot of that in California in those days, and I was so already told about it because I didn't live here at the time. Yeah. So uh, and. You know, um, it was interesting, you know, like when Doug Camilli was originally from this area. I don't know if you knew about him, but you looked him up. He was well, DiMaggio from, is from San Francisco. Pardon? Right? DiMaggio was from San Francisco, right? Who? DiMaggio. DiMaggio. Wasn't he San Francisco? Who was this? Joe DiMaggio. Oh, DiMaggio was from San Francisco. That's right, yeah. Uh, um, I'm trying to think who else was from. Pete Reeser was from the Midwest somewhere, but... Um, Doug Camelli's father, Dolph Camelli. Look up Dolph Camelli. Doug had his father pitch, played first base for the Dodgers and played his minor league ball in, in the Bay Area and was raised in Northern California. And Doug Camelli was raised in Northern California. Even though when he ended up playing ball, he ended up marrying a girl down in Georgia, Alabama, and he's, <laughs> that's where he lives now. But he was raised here, went to college at uh, the big one here in Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley. He went to, you know, he played ball at Berkeley. Right. I mean, his dad was a major leaguer, so I mean, he was really into the whole thing. He was drafted by the Dodgers, and uh, you know, so uh, we used to, he used to <coughs> tell me stories about this area, and I didn't know anything about it. I never visited California, but he used to tell me stories where he grew up, up here. Uh, north of uh, us, right here, where they, started, they had a wine country, they had a winery up there, up, and, Napa. Uh, up in Napa somewhere. And uh, the old man, when he was with the Dodgers and stuff, he lived in the city. They were divorced, evidently, and they had, I, I don't know whether the wife lived, I don't know anything about that, but the, they were divorced and they weren't living together. But I know he had the winery, the kids grew up in the winery area. They went to school up in the Northern Bay area here. 